Hi and welcome to this second video on percentage. In this video, I'll talk about the powerful concept of fractions and how it can save you considerable amount of time in aptitude exams. So let's get started. First, I would like to highlight the concept of fractions. In our previous video, we learned what a fraction is. But I want what I want to specially highlight is the difference between fractions and ratio, although these two words are interchangeably used by a lot of people. So let's say we have three boys and five girls in a class. So technically speaking, fractions is part to whole. What that means is if I ask you what is the fraction of boys in the class, you can say three by eight. It part boys to whole whole three plus five boys plus girls so this is the fraction or if I ask you what is the fraction of girls in the class it is five by eight that means fractions is nothing but part to whole whereas the concept of ratios is part to part that means if I ask you what is the ratio of boys to girls in the class, it is 3 by 5. Or if I ask you what is the ratio of girls to boys in the class, you can say 5 by 3. This is a very simple concept of fractions and ratio. So now let's move to the crux of this video, which is really these terms. Now, 1 by 2 is 50%, 1 by 3 is 33.33%. I think some of these terms we would know. What we may want to focus here is, look at a few more terms like 16.66, 14.28, 9.09, 8.33. And if we want to save considerable amount of time in the exam, we should learn these videos. I hope you know how we have arrived at 1 by 2 to 50%. That means I said percent is everything by 100, but when you say 1 by 2, it is 1 per 2, not per 100. So how we can convert it into percentages? You have to multiply this into 50 so that this becomes 100. So if we multiply in denominator, you have to do the same in numerator. So it becomes 50 by 100 or 50 percent. I want you to stop or pause this video and really by heart all of these ratios and numbers. And we will see in the next video how uh, in the same video in the next uh, section how we can apply the same concept. So let's say if you have 1 by 8 here, 12.5, if somebody asks you what is 1 by 16, this is something that you should calculate orally. This is half of this, that means this would be 6.25, right? Or if somebody asks you what is 1 by 22, you should be able to say this is 18.18. Now let's look at the application of this concept. So in the exam, if somebody asks you what is 14.28% of 777. So instead of doing 14.28 upon 100 into 777 and multiplying this number with this number, I mean, this doesn't look very exciting. So this will take a long time and not only time, you may end up making some mistakes in the calculation and end up with a wrong answer. I would advise the moment you see 14.28, you know, there are two ways to do it. One is the approach that I told you 10 plus 5 minus something that way we can express it or smarter way is 14.28 directly in your head should be 1 by 7. That means 1 by 7 of 777. Now this is, isn't this directly 111? It saves so much of your time. Let's look at another problem. 37.5 of 1600, 37.5% of 1600. Now we know we learned a few ratios, but can you see a correlation here? Now 37.5. Don't you see 12.5 here? So that means if 12.5 is 1 by 8, 3 by 8 is nothing but 37.5. So that means 37.5% is nothing but 3 by 8 of this number 1600. So orally you can say 8 into 200 is 1600. This is 600. Your answer orally you can calculate. Now I'll also take an example of a word problem and how in this typical problem in the exam, how you can save a lot of time. So what I'll show you is I'll first show you the standard method and then I'll show you our new method so that you understand the ease and you know how much time saving you can really do. So while this may take five seconds for me to answer in the exam, 
and if you go by the standard method you may take one minute and still calculate the wrong answer so let me give you an example so a shirt is marked up by 28.56 percent and the new price of the shirt is 1800 they're asking what was the original price of the shirt so let's say the price of the shirt be p okay price of the shirt now you marked it up by 25 28.56 that means plus 28.56 percent of ps this becomes 1800 that means if you say price of the shirt common 1 plus 28.56 by 100 equals to 1800 or you can say ps 1.2856 equals 1800 or you can calculate the price of the shirt as 1800 upon 1.2856 i mean after doing all these equations still you are left with this number and imagine this is like a nightmare who wants to save and waste a lot of who wants to waste so much of time in the exam plus even if you get it right there could be a chance either you wasted a lot of time or you end up with the wrong answer our new method says the moment you see 28.56 what should ring a bell it's 1 by 7 is 14.28 and 2 by 7 would not would be nothing but 28.56 that means if you add 2 in the 7 that means it has increased by that means it has increased by 28.56 that means if the original price of the shirt was 7 and if you added 2 it would increase by 28.56 so it would have actually become 9 9 would be the new price but they are saying in the exam it's not 9 it's 1800 that means all you have to do is there's a multiplying factor of there's a multiplying factor of 200 9 into 200 which is 1800 that means if the multiplying factor is here 200 the same multiplying factor would be everywhere that means in 1 by 7 2 by 7 so 7 multiplying factor of 200 that means your original price of the shirt was 7 into 200 is 1400 that means in 1400 you added 28.56 which is your 400 and that's how you got 1800 so this is the powerful concept of fractions I think you'll take a little time to understand and practice so that you become confident at this question but after practice trust me you can take you'll take only five seconds to do this problem instead of one minute and still calculating the wrong answer so thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in our next video on percentage change